everyone. Uh, here today again with Hannah. Thanks for joining us live today. We're talking about should we teach toddlers the alphabet, which is a huge question that comes up. We're following on from last month's Facebook Lives where we talked all about narrative and I hope you didn't get sick of it because it's something that we'll probably keep talking about because it's so important. Uh, we know obviously we're wanting to engage our young people with good quality literature uh, and use that as a format to get them reading, get them to love reading and get them to connect with it. So um, one of the questions we get the most often is should we teach the alphabet? You know my kids are going to school, mm -hmm. they don't know their letters, should I be worried or, or this sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So and Hannah actually you <laughs> As we were talking about this, just jumped in and as you talked about your daughter. So yeah. we thought we'd share that the conversation that we have with, with you guys. And we can see your questions as well. So if you, uh, if you have a question or something that you want to comment, pop it down below and we'll respond to it as we go through. So I have a three and a bit year old daughter who currently goes to kindy. And she has been showing a lot of interest in letters and books and those sorts of things. And my question is around, you know, how could I be using books to help with the alphabet or should it be focusing on the alphabet? Should I focus on letters? Because she started recognizing letters in the community, recognizing letters at home, wanting to draw them, that kind of thing. What should I be doing? So what kind of things does she do already to show her interest in, liter uh, in literacy? Um, so at bedtime she loves reading a book, she also likes, um, I have some books on my phone, the Fitzroy's, yeah. which she likes reading through just because she can do it independently, um, and recognising her letters, so the letters from her name yeah. and the letter from yeah. my name, and then in the community, um, whenever we see like a, um, her, the first letter of her name, she will point it out and want me to recognise that she's pointed it out yeah. and my letters and those sorts of things. Yes. So all of those things you can hear are really early emerging print knowledge skills. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the first directions that I would sort of steer the conversation in away from teaching alphabet to toddlers. Um, I had a quick YouTube uh, of, um, you know, A is for <laughs> and all the videos that come mm -hmm. up of just drilling and flashcarding and using songs mm -hmm. to go A is for apple and alligator and alarm clock and aardvark and you know, this drill style teaching of, of alphabet letters and words that are associated with them, which is not necessarily a really evidence-based way to do it. It's, it's not necessarily helpful. Now, I'm not going to rule it out. I'm not going to say it's harmful. Um, but there's better things that we can do to prepare our child for literacy. So if we bring it back to why do we want, why do we want to teach them letters and teach them flashcards, what are we looking for? What do, you, what do you want? For your I point? would like her to be able to recognize letters, their sounds, and eventually be able to read. Be able to read. You want her to be able to read. And what we know to get to that point of reading is having a great oral language foundation, which we talked about so much last month, and to start to make a connection between the spoken word and the written word. Right. And that's what parents are often really trying to do when they are, you know, playing with their magnetic letters and they've got them on the fridge and they're spelling out different words. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they've gone to Officeworks and they've found a few flashcard style things yeah. and they think, let's get them ready, let's use mm -hmm. these things to get them to read because what we want is our kids to be great independent read. readers. We know how important that is. Mm -hmm. um, and that intention is excellent, it's perfect. perfect. So, yeah. but what we want to do is look at how can we create that connection between the spoken word that we say and the written word that we find in our books. Yes, how okay, can we because, do that? How can we do that? <laughs> so, alphabet, ironically, is actually not the answer at the pre-literacy stage. So, for a three and a half year old, um, Look, they're not reading yet. They're not at school yet. We're not looking at formal academic skills. What we're looking at is engaging with books in a way that sets them up for success with literacy. Okay. So there's two key things that we're going to talk about this month in our Facebook Lives and in the blog posts that you see. Um, but we're going to touch on both of them today. Okay. And the first thing we want to look at, first of all, let me just go back before I give okay. away what those two things are. I want to show you why we don't stick with just the alphabet. Okay, so if we look for our letter A here, you watch, I'm not going to be able to find one. There it is. Okay, so we've got our letter A, our magnetic 
card. Now, I don't know if you guys can see what I've written here. We've got A written in a couple of different ways. Hannah, from an OT perspective, just give me your thoughts on how kids go discriminating between capitals, lowercase, different fonts. It's they're hard. All, they're all the same letter. Apparently they all make the same sound, but they all look completely different. Completely different. And handwriting and then computer fonts, it's, it's actually pretty hard to discriminate. It is really hard. Yep. And like kindies will tend to go with capitals, whereas the ones that we want in prep is this lowercase because it's a little bit more important in prep. So even from a visual discrimination point of view, that's a pretty sophisticated skill yep. to recognise that they're all the same letter. And then we go on and we look at some of our books. Um, Hannah, can you hold this? Yes, I can. Okay. So if I pull up, I've got an animal alphabet book here. Um, I actually searched the clinic for um, poor examples of letter sound. I couldn't find any. <laughs> but look, this one, this one demonstrates my point. We've got our A puzzle here, which the child might think is super fun. They're obviously looking for a matching skill to build this, um, this connection. This, okay, that one matches that. That's the letter A. And they've got A is for armadillo. So using our, that's our R sound, which we spell with an A-R. Um, A is for armadillo. And then if we look at this one, we've got the mouse family ABC. And we've got this one here, so it's actually got both of them in this book, so it's a little bit better. Um, and we've got A is for apples, which is the A sound. Um, I've just pulled out a couple of other really common words that we've got. So we've got A in apple, we've got R, like an arm, an aardvark or armadillo. A, ant, ant. Air, like an ant, because yeah. we're Australian. Um, A, like an eight, um, or Amy. And then air, like an airplane. And these are just common ones that you'll find in early toddler's book, all connected with this A sound. That's really mm -hmm. hard. It's no wonder we get confused. And this is one of the things why using alphabet to teach letter sound correspondences at this age, it's probably not the best way to do it because it's a bit confusing. What we want is to set kids up with a good foundation for learning literacy and then they enter prep and they get exposure to a good, explicit, systematic, synthetic phonics program mm -hmm. and then they'll be ready to just take off with their literacy. But coming back to talking about well, what are those two things we can do when we are reading mm -hmm. to make the link between the spoken word and the written word. Okay. So the first thing is developing print knowledge and this is exactly what you were talking about. So print, that's not that's not rocket science, it's the printed words mm -hmm. on the page. And what we're wanting to do is develop some knowledge about the fact that words, printed words, exist. And that might sound a bit weird, but it's actually not that easy. Um, so the first thing, the things that are involved in print knowledge, if I give a book to you, what do you do? Open it from the front, go to the cover. So straight away, Hannah knows to hold the book correctly, to orientate the book correctly, and to go to the cover, and you know the book goes up this way, and we read from left to right. Mm -hmm. So some basic print knowledge. If you give a book to a baby, they're just going to chew on it. They're going to chew on it. They're going to explore it. They're going to play with it. They might pretend to read and, you know, yeah. show some emerging skills of what does this book do. But it's basic knowledge around this is a book and I can read it and I start at the beginning and the way it looks at the pictures. She'll look and then at the pictures. Make things up. And then make things up. So <laughs> she's trying to show you, I know this picture probably means something and I don't know which word it is, but I'll, I'll have a go. So we're looking at page turning. Um, going from left to right, it's your turn to turn the page. Uh, books have, not this one, mm -hmm. this one. Uh, books have an author and he's the person that wrote it. He had some ideas and he wrote that down. Uh, and they might have an illustrator that made the pictures. So for basic print knowledge skills, children might be able to, can you find me some words on this page? Where are the words? Here's some, look, I've got some words. How many words are there? Six little rabbits. That's three words there. Can you find me the biggest word on this page? There's the biggest one. Words too, munching and chocolate. Munching and chocolate, they're the biggest ones that we can see. Can you see any words that look the same? This print's probably a little bit small for toddlers, but Hannah's there got good eyes. There actually aren't. Are they none the same? No. Okay, that's a question you can ask though. The other things you can do is looking at rhyming. So we've got six little rabbits down by the lake, munching on carrots and chocolate. 
cake. So we've got our rhyming words in there, which is a lovely pre-literacy skill to develop as well. Now this is not explicit teaching. You're not drilling the child and going, I'm gonna teach you rhyming now. Cake, lake. That's not what you're doing with a book. You're developing a little bit of print knowledge and just as you fold your way through these books, you're exploring them, you're getting to know them, you're recognizing that words exist. Um, look, there's some chocolate cake. Here it is. Mm. And you've just made a beautiful link between the chocolate cake and the chocolate there. So early print knowledge skills that we're talking about. Um, you can talk about the size of different words. Wow, that's a really important word. Look how big it is. Um, and you can use that to show your emphasis in the voice and all of those sorts of things. So a little bit of print knowledge. So the child's developing their awareness. Um, if you had a bit of an easier book, this one's quite narrative focused. Um, you can definitely do a little bit more of like, look, house. There it is, house. Her, her house. And there it is again. And look, that one's house as well. So you can definitely make some of those connections. It's not reading, but it's getting ready to read. It's yeah. learning about what words do and what they're for and how they work. So print knowledge skills. That's the first one. The second thing that we want to talk about is dialogic book reading. Mm -hmm. Okay, So coming back to my terrible plot book that I love so much. When we're looking at dialogic book reading, that word dialogic, I probably should have it written down because we know visuals help. Um, but it comes from the word dialogue, mm -hmm. which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So what we're actually looking, a lot of parents, when we ask them to show us what you do with your books at home, mm -hmm. um, they will sit down and they really, really want to turn the pages and get to the end because that's how I know I did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that something that you do? Mm -hmm. No, because Good. I work with you guys. <laughs> you so what do you do when you're reading, Hannah? So um, when we, Rem, Emery and I read together, um, we open up our book, we have a bit of a chat about the pictures and then we read the words and as we read the words we relate to the picture we talk about it you know she asks questions I answer the questions or she, I answer ask a question and she answers the question it takes right. us forever to read a book yeah um, yeah we go through and and I get her to turn the page when she's ready great sometimes do you not finish a book yes the really really long ones <laughs> absolutely like and that's perfectly okay <laughs> so the point of dialogic book reading is that it is a dialogue between us mm -hmm. about what is happening on the page and mm -hmm. what we can learn from it so you do want to read the words sure mm -hmm. um, but that is only one part of the process we want to make sure that what we're really doing is asking questions we're expanding on our child's language when they ask us something or they tell us something um, not too much you know it's not it's not meant to be a yeah, I'm teaching you now activity. It's meant to be a shared, beautiful, fun experience. She does a lot of, what's this? What's that? What's this? Mm. And then what is that? What does this say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and what she's doing there is asking the very first level, you've actually mm. set me up beautifully, because there's three levels or three or four levels of questioning that you can use mm -hmm. in dialogic book reading. So the first level is exactly that. What's this? Mm -hmm. And either one of you answer and you're mm -hmm. learning new words on the page. We've talked and talked and talked about yeah. books being great for vocab. Yeah. And you can definitely link that written vocab with mm -hmm. it as well. But again, it's not reading, it's just print knowledge yeah. that we're developing here. Um, and then, so your first questions are all about just identifying objects on the page. So you're really talking about the concrete things that are right in front of you. Look, it's an apple. Wow, I think it's really crunchy. You know, mm -hmm. and you're starting to just relate to the things on the page. Mm -hmm. As your child gets better at that, what do you think the next thing could be? What other questions could you ask? We start talking about, like, what do you think they're doing? Yeah. Where do you think they're going? Yeah. What might happen next? So a little bit of prediction, yeah. yeah, which is great. So the next level of question is that it's a bit more of your open-ended WH questions. Where, why, what next, what are yeah. they doing, what are they thinking? You're still talking about the characters here and you're still talking about what you can see on the page, but you're starting to think about it just a little bit more. And this is why it takes you so long to get through the book because you're actually having a little conversation about these poor little rabbits that got really yeah. upset by this noise. Yeah. Um, the next stage then, once that gets a little bit easier um, for your kids, is to develop them even one more step, is to get into that last stage of dialogic book reading, which is all about something that they call distance referencing. So distance, if you think about how far is your question mm. away from 
what you're actually looking at on the page. So an example of that might be talking about a time when you felt upset. Mm. So we're not actually really on the book anymore. It's like, wow, these rabbits heard a really loud noise and they got upset. Remember the other day when we were at the shops? Mm. What happened? Oh, the fire alarm went off. We were just like the rabbits. And so now we're actually relating to the literature. There's a bit of distance between the book and the topic that we're talking about, but we're learning to sort of associate and use books to process events, emotions, experiences, and learn about characters' reactions and that kind of a thing. Because we've got a bit more distance, we can also start to talk about, um, well, what, why do you think the author wrote it like that? Or, or why do you think the pictures, you know, why did they draw the bear like this? Again, we've got a bit of distance in the conversation that we're having between yeah. all of us here. <laughs> she's Does that make sense? Once or twice, yeah, she's gone, they look sad, I was sad the other day. Exactly, and then that leads us into the final thing is using books for personal narrative, okay. which we'll talk about a little bit later in, in one of our later, yes. later Facebook lives. We've talked about personal narratives before, but leading into we want our kids to get ready, to go to school, to read well, the print knowledge will help them with their literacy um, learning at school yep. and then all of that thinking and oral language that you do around the book will set them up for their written expression okay. in the classroom which is on the weekend I and then that's mm -hmm. where those little personal narratives need to come back out okay. and they often need to relate to a topic at yep. school write about a time when you know or write holidays, about right. what you did on holidays and the teacher will give them quite a specific topic to write about and then they need to kind of go ahead and do that. So using books as a format to uh, expand on personal narratives is a really great way to do that. And Hannah, you would know, but it's also a really good way to start to process and learn about emotions yeah. as well. So um, that is my spiel for today on dialogic book reading and why using that strategy and a bit of print knowledge in your nighttime bed routines or um, whenever you do your book reading is better than learning letters. learning letters. And you can see straight away how rich is all of the learning that can happen and all of the beautiful language that can happen in a book versus we've got <laughs> numbers and letters. I mean, M still looks at the books and goes, there's my yeah. letter and like, yeah. talks about it and that sort of stuff. But The letters are a really important better. part of the code. Yeah. <laughs> without understanding young. the letters, we're not going to be able to read. And without knowing what letters do and how they work, mm -hmm. but the best way to teach letter sound correspondences is like with that. a synthetic phonics, systematic synthetic phonics program, which happens should happen school. at school. Yeah. And that's fine. It's not it's not our job as parents at home to be to be doing that. Um, and there are there are programs yeah. and things you can do for that. Uh, but the best thing you can do to get them ready because. Once children learn to decode to air in bull and they can actually move their way through the, the reading accuracy side of things, they still have to be able to comprehend the story. Yes. And oral language is the best foundation for reading comprehension. Okay. Alphabet knowledge is not a strong predictor. So of talking about what's happening in that kind of thing is talking much about for the, the story, right. inferencing about the story. If you think about your later developing like when you're in mid and upper primary school, yeah. it's no longer about reading the words. It's no. about understanding the story, understanding the author's mm -hmm. intention and commenting on that. So that's where we want to head with the way that we're thinking about books. Right. Rather than just, can you read the words on the page? That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Very good. No, All I'm right. Do that. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next week on our next Facebook Live.